I know I'm going to make a quick video, and I'm pretty darn sure I'm going to have people that are totally against what I say here. And, you know, at the end of the day, if I'm wrong, I don't care. I'm just bringing it up because it, it is so strange that people get all carried away about certain things, okay? If I have gotten convicted all my life and I admit it, and then when I got baptized by the Holy Spirit right there in New Mexico, that I felt like I was being con convicted for five or six hours long, I know what conviction is, okay? Mind you, all my life I've been convicted. So, if I've been convicted, do you think that if it's, if it's, if it's a salvation issue about the Sabbath, don't you think that God would have pointed this out to me? Just like when people out here try to act like they're Sabbath keepers and stuff, and here's people over here that talk about pork. If I've never been convicted on pork, is this a salvation issue? No, it's not. Is the Sabbath a salvation issue? No, it's not. So I'm going to point this out. And you, you're probably not going to like this, what I get ready to say here. Okay, and I'm not saying I'm right. I want you to think about this. Somebody asked me earlier if I knew what the Ten Commandments were. Well, I know what the Ten Commandments are. Just because I can't verbally tell you, you think I haven't read, you think I haven't witnessed them with my own two eyes. I can literally listen to people in videos and I already know what they're going to say when I know the scripture. Just because I couldn't sit here and tell you bear, bear false witness and all this. Um, I didn't even know that the that that keeping the Sabbath holy and in remembrance was the fourth. Okay, now think about this. You know that Jesus had to follow what all those people around in that time were doing, correct? Or Jesus would have had a problem from day one if Jesus didn't follow. And I'm not saying Jesus was wrong. To do what they were doing back then but you guys know just as well as I do you guys have heard that they have a traditions of men they had books listed that were nothing to do with the Bible whatsoever now listen why did Jesus step out I just want you to think about this for a moment why did Jesus step out and do something on the Sabbath that, uh, that back then they thought would have been wrong. Was it wrong? Or was the stuff that they believed nothing more than a traditions of men? I mean, think about this for a second. I question people out here that talk about the Sabbath because back then they wouldn't have gotten in their car and drove down the road to another town. So I question people out here that talk about how they're Sabbath keepers. Because if, they're, if they were doing what they did back in the days that Christ had his ministry, today, if they were doing like they were back then, they wouldn't get in their car and drive to the next town to go to church on the Sabbath. So are they true Sabbath keepers compared to people back in those days? No, they're not. Because I know that they're still washing clothes on Saturday. I know they're still waking up and eating breakfast. And I know they're still cooking lunch. And they're still cooking it in, in, at dinner time. But do I believe that even the stuff that they were doing back then, that that was commanded by God, that they didn't do anything on the Sabbath? Think about this. Re keep it into remembrance. Can anybody prove to me that keeping in remembrance meant you could not do anything? How about keeping it holy? Can anybody out there prove that keeping it holy meant that you couldn't do nothing on the Sabbath? Think about this. They had books of traditions that they did that God did not necessarily tell a human being back then that they had to do. Think about that. So people sit here and make a big deal about the Sabbath this, Sabbath that, Sabbath this, Sabbath that. Mind you, I've already admitted before, I've only witnessed two people that ever said Sunday was the Sabbath. So physically, me witnessing out here in my life, I've only witnessed two people that have ever said that the Sabbath was Sunday. So 
hey, by the way, if you're going to church on Saturday, good for you. I'm not against it. But to make it sound like there's something special about you versus anyone else out here, let me tell you this. I'm going to say this again because I know that this is the truth. Um, when people were going to church 40 years ago, 30 plus years ago when I was going to church, I could look and know the people that I've met I mean, there was a sister Benel. I knew a woman and a, a, a I knew a woman and her husband. Uh, I can't remember their names. It's been so long. I knew people in the church that I was going to. These were people that were serving God. They didn't just honor God with their lips and not their heart. They were li they were literally walking the walk that God asked people to walk every day. Today, if I didn't know and witness people out here, I wouldn't know who's inheriting the kingdom or not. That's how horrible the message is today. Those people were going to church on Sunday, and the majority of people are honoring God with their lips and not their heart. Saying they're a Christian in their heart shows they're not. So when it comes to the Sabbath, if you're going to sit here and say, and make a big deal about you going to church on the Sabbath and, 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 and yes, I did finally witness a pastor say that the Sunday law was the mark of the beast. No, it isn't. Never was, never will be. Um, but I'm going to tell you this right now. If you think you're special for going to church on Saturday versus someone going to church on Sunday when at least I knew people that went to church on Sunday back then serving the Lord and the majority of Christians today with hey, hey okay let's think about this for a second I don't mean to bring up denominations here but I'm going to so I know that I've witnessed Hebrew Israelites I'm not talking smack against you if you watch this video I'm not talking smack against you I've seen how they talk, how they walk, and uh, their pride. Same with uh, Seven Day Adventist. I've seen your pride. I don't know how you walk. I know there was a pastor, I just got done watching his video, where he told two people that they need to make up their mind, two groups of people, they need to make up their mind because they were fornicators. And so what I'm telling you this right now, there are still going to be seven-day Adventists that are going to slip up and watch porn. There are still going to be seven-day Adventists that smoke weed, get drunk, fornicate, commit adultery, idolatry, the whole works. You can sit here and say, I follow the Sabbath. There's something special about me, everyone. I follow the Sabbath. Well, not when you're of your father, the devil. So this goes for everyone out there in society. This goes for all you people in society. Just like you once saved out there. You're living your life a habitual, hypocritical, unrepentant sin. All these Christians out here that are doing it. The Catholic Church literally believes against sin. But they're living it. They're living it. So, at the end of the day, there ain't nothing special about y'all. Because if you're against God, you're against God, and that's just a fact. And since I've never been convicted on the Sabbath in six years, and I know what conviction feels like, that if it was so important my salvation was on the line... You think God wouldn't point it out? And just because it says if you love Christ, you'll follow the commandments. Uh, I'm telling you this right now. God would have not made me a watchman and for six years made videos. Well, technically, probably the first six months when I was in New Mexico, I made like one video. Back then, I was ignorant. I was so ignorant. Smoking cigarettes. It wouldn't make a difference if I'm still smoking. Back then, I made videos where I was smoking a darn cigarette. You think I'm the only one out here? I've, always, I've also witnessed one other person out here making videos for God, for YouTube, smoking a cigarette. I was ignorant. That's besides the point. 
what I'm telling you this right now is that uh, if you think there's something special about you, you think you're gone out of your way. I mean, again, let me tell you this. If, if this was a glass of alcohol, you know, I drink and a full glass of Crown one time. Yes, believe me, I don't even know how I lived. I mean, literally, straight Crown. Um, if this was alcohol, now what, I'm getting thrown off here. If this was alcohol, now I've gotten thrown off. Should have never even said any of this. Should have never even said. I, I'm going to tell you this right now. Like I said, Y'all are, uh, oh, oh, uh, it's right on the tip. Come on, come back, come back. Uh, it, it comes back most of the time when I'm, when it's a good message. Come on, come back, come back, come on back. McFly, come back, come back, McFly. <laughs> I, I'm telling you this right now. Um, no, this isn't going to work. Oh, conviction. There, I mean, either way. I'm just trying to prove a point. Just It's just like this Jesus thing. It's just like because people have gone through and done some Bible code breaking that they've come up with names that they give Jesus. I'm still going to say Yeshua, the same amount of letters that's in Yahweh. If you guys want to say other things, that's fine with you. It's going to be as close to the same. And... If you're going to make it seem like it's such a big deal that you're supposed to say Yeshua or Yahushua versus uh, Jesus, uh -uh, you're not fooling me. Because for years, people didn't use these names. They still went to church on Saturday using, I mean, on Sunday using Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you right now, if they were serving the Lord, I know where they're at. The ones that are serving the Lord with their lips and not their heart, I know where they're going to go. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you think you're so special about your, uh, what's that called? What is that organization that you had to say us? Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I looked it up one day. I found it. I, unbelievable. Sacred Name Society. Google it. Google it. I'm not dumb. Google it. Sacred Name Society. Go Google it. Somebody thinks they're special by saying a certain name. Well, I'm going to tell you this right now. Y'all are only fooling yourself to think there's something special about you because you sit here and you come up with a name that you think that is Jesus Christ. Or that you think that there's something special about you for saying Yahweh or Yah versus God. Because he's God's answered me this whole time. Sometimes I say our Heavenly Father. Uh, but there ain't nothing special about y'all. I mean, for years at least people were living for God instead of out here living a life of ritual sin like the majority of Christians are out here today and saying there's something special about them. Get out of here with this garbage. I'm trying to prove a point here. And there ain't nothing special about y'all. Just like there's nothing special about y'all if y'all want to believe in a lie over the truth. And God gives you a delusion. Or you go around turning a truth into a lie and he gives you a reprobate mind. There ain't nothing special about you. You know that he chastens you. You know that he rebukes you. And you know what? He can definitely turn his back on you too. Just like people can turn their back when they go back and backslide, Jeff, like other people out here too. Don't think I'm just putting myself down. But hey, you know what? Uh, I know the truth and God hasn't given up. And God doesn't expect people to give up. I mean, for them to give up themselves. But uh, hey, I, hey, I'm telling you the truth. I told you the two worst things a Christian can do is believe in a lie over the truth. And that's what so many Christians out here in this world have done and have turned the truth into a lie, believe, telling people the same garbage they believe in. And it's a lie. It's a lie. You believed in a lie. You turn the truth into a lie. You say you don't have to repent. That's a lie. You just turned the truth into a lie that you have to repent into a lie. You don't have to repent. Reprobate mind, people. You guys better wake up out there. You better wake up out there. So, um, don't you see how society's so far off? Again, I know everybody out here wants to sit here and say, it's the non-believers. No, it started at the church. You can go look at the church. The church is fallen. It's in fallen state, people. It's not the same as it was 30 years ago when I went to church. 
Yes, I didn't. Yes, I was young. Yes, I didn't get this message that all the grown-ups got, like a lot of grown-ups get today. Your children didn't get the messages that you got to, that you're getting today. I mean, you didn't get the messages back then when you were a child, when you were in the back room with your kids. You didn't get, I mean, I, I was older. I did go in there during, you know, 11 to, or 1030 to, to noon. I mean, I can't believe this garbage today. Everybody going in at 1030. I mean, we used to go in at eight o'clock. I mean, I don't understand this today. I don't understand one day a week. It used to be two days a week. What happened here? I mean, I don't understand this. this is the, I mean, um... But I know you people have not been convicted about the Sabbath, and I know you haven't. Oh, I know what I was going to say. If this was alcohol, I remember. It came back. If this was alcohol, and you came up to me and said, Jeff, you shouldn't be drinking alcohol. You know God wouldn't be happy if you drank alcohol. You know, I, 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 you really don't need to ever drink alcohol. Is that conviction or is that guilt trip? Is that guilty conscience or is that, is that conviction? Oh, so if a man came up and said, hey, I think, it, I think God would want you to go to church on Saturday. You know, you're wrong for not going to church on Saturday. And what would that be? Would that be guilt trip, guilty conscience, or would that be conviction? When everybody says, I got a convicting message, I'm I'm thinking, um, no. No, you got a you got a, a guilt trip message. A tr a message that made you feel bad for the way you were. Who can anybody do that to someone? Yes, they sure can. You know, God gave us a conscience. Now a lot of people don't show it out here, but a lot of people have got a conscience. Still and they show it. Some people don't. But ain't nobody going to make me feel like that I had to go to church on Saturday versus Sunday when people were used to living for the Lord. Now they're not. And I'm going to tell you this right now. And if you think I'm just talking about seven day Adventists or your Hebrew Israelites and all, I'm going to tell you right now. I know that behind sin is pride. You think you know better than God. I'm telling you. And you know what's crazy? I even found an article that even said this stuff. This was months after I declared it in videos. How would somebody else say the same thing I said and I never witnessed it from a single soul out here? Behind y'all sin out there, behind your sin, Jeff, is pride at the end of the day. Look at all the other prideful people. What are they all out doing? Sinful things, aren't they? When the atheists don't want to hear what God has to say because of rebellion? How about the, um, well, say, uh, Satanist? Same thing? Don't want to hear? Pride? I mean, a patriot? What are they out here doing? Here's a patriot. I'm a patriot. Oh, I'm a patriot. Big time America. It's all been about America. God bless America, the red, white, and blue. And they can't even quit talking about Demo uh, what, Demorats. They can't even quit talking about Demorats. They're all Demorats. <laughs> With hatred in their heart of their father, the devil. With their pride. Yeah, I mean, I can see through all this garbage. You guys can preach all your garbage out here. It doesn't make a difference whether it's patriotism or your once saved garbage. And I can see all through all of it. Thank you, Lord. Because I can guarantee if it wouldn't have been for God, it wouldn't be happening. I can tell you that right now. Just like when I started waking up, when I got my uh, YouTube account back in uh, about nine years ago. Nine years ago is when I opened up my first Facebook account, and I cannot believe that my saying on Facebook is you can't do what you want to do and go to heaven. And I still stick by that to this day. I had that on my Facebook account when you opened it up and you had a little saying, you can't go to heaven doing what you want to do. 
And people out here, Christians are doing exactly what they want to do. Not what God, I mean, not what God's necessarily for. He's against the things people are out here doing what they want to do for. Well, you know what? I think you guys can do put one and one together. Hopefully you people can. I was horrible at math, but one and one's pretty easy. Twenty minutes into a video that I should have been twenty minutes into that bed asleep. Oh, by the way, I just got done watching a Jerry Tony video. I went to look to see, to to start listening to this video. How many comments were there? One hundred and forty-four comments. I was the one hundred and forty-fifth because I made a comment. I remember that day that this person recorded a shark that was underneath a surfer and he was recording it from a drone and uh, he talked about his subscribers all these new subscribers that he got because he recorded this shark that was underneath a uh, surfer that was in calm water and I looked down to see how many how many subscribers did he had? 144,000. <laughs> Just think if it had been two weeks before that. Listen to somebody say, how many subscribers? He didn't even give how many he had. I looked down as 144. Could you imagine two weeks before that? It could have been 140. Hey, but that's pride, Jeff. You're talking pride. No, it's the truth. Come out of the darkness and into the light. You do have to be obedient. It's in the Bible. Sorry, people, that people don't want to hear you have to do something to either get saved or maintain your salvation. Why you guys talk against somebody doing, doing something to actually be saved is only why God sits there and says that you, can't, that you cannot boast about anything as you're saving yourself is because of what Christ did in the very first scripture of the Bible. I have to point this out all the time in beginning in Hebrew. Go do some math. In beginning in Hebrew, it's right there in the Bible. In beginning is talking about Christ. It talks about Christ in the Bible before it talks about God. All you have to do is find the videos out here on YouTube. A man would come and die on the cross by his own hands. Yes, there you go. So for the redemption process was from the very first scripture of the Bible, do you have to do something to be saved? You sure do. You have to turn to Christ. And you're not turning to Christ while you're in sin out here, everyone. That's the truth. You're not going to maintain having the Holy Spirit out here living a sinful life, grieving the Holy Spirit and God being your enemy. I don't think so. And that's a person that had the Holy Spirit. That's somebody that was led by the Holy Spirit like those so many people in the book of Isaiah. God never changed. There you go. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying what you people have said in the past. God never changed. David, I'm not trying to talk to somebody that's dead, but why did you ask God not to take the Holy Spirit away in the book of Psalms? Again, why did I witness that scripture about a month later and the way I witnessed the scripture was even crazier because I was never looking for it. Well, I had to at least tell people they're wrong. I'm sorry, people, you're wrong out here. If you guys want to sit here and think that you, the only way you're going to be saved is if you believe it's a flat earth, keep on believing it's a flat earth. I'm still telling somebody, I'll give you, I can at least come up with five, ten bucks. Enough five and ten bucks from people, a person could actually go around the, the earth north to south. That's how you're going to find out if it's a flat earth or not. You're not going to go east to west around the earth and figure out if it's flat or not. You go north to south. And if you eventually run into something, well, you saved up enough money, whoever bought the plane at least paid off. 
How many people? I mean, you got how many? You got probably at least twenty million people in America would give a dollar by playing off. Somebody get in. Somebody. If you go around the earth, north to south, and you don't see no roots on the bottom of the, the earth, and you don't see that you know like a flat spot on you know ground, whatever, then it's not a flat earth. Hey. It's worthy of spending a dollar or ten dollars, whatever it is, if people want to sit here and get over this subject. You know what? At the end of the day, am I am I downing one person that goes to church on the Saturday? Am I downing one person?